My experience with a touchy band instructor. This happened a while back when I was still in elementary school. Sorry if this story is a tad bit long. I've always wanted to learn how to play an instrument, and unfortunately for my parents and their sanity, I finally decided on the drums. Lucky for me, not many people wanted to play drums for our crappy little elementary school band, so practices were usually just me and the band instructor, or me and another girl and the instructor. The practices started off innocent enough. My instructor, Mr. S, seemed really impressed with me just dicking around on the drums and showed interest. I guess I was just excited to think I had some sort of a skill, so I never felt too weird about the extra attention. Our practices would become more frequent, but usually with the other girl as well. She sometimes didn't come, and sometimes I would be alone with the band instructor. That's okay, though. When she wasn't there, Mr. S would always find reasons to get too close to me. The most extra excuse was that I looked too tense playing, and he would rub my shoulders and have me sit on his lap. This would freak me out, but I wouldn't dare say anything because I felt so guilty, like I, like I did something wrong. I thought my parents would be mad at me if they found out. I continued showing up and of course, the more uncomfortable I was, the more Mr. S would try relaxing me. The weirdest encounter, and the one that got me to quit playing drums, was when he actually tied us up with Christmas lights and duct tape in one of the closets. He must have been testing his limits to see how far he could get. I decided after that incident that I was done with my drums. My parents were pissed we wasted all that money but I was still so scared to tell them anything about the creepy instructor. Thank god the practices were during the school day and not too long because I have no idea what would have happened if we were alone with him after school, just me and him. I never told my parents about this incident or any of the others and it still feels weird posting about this. I still feel some sense of weird sense of guilt even though I know I'm not supposed to. The dude eventually got arrested because I guess he did it also to a bunch of other students. I'll post the article online later, when I'm not on mobile. I was in third grade. An uncle tried to pick me up from school. He was not my uncle. Thinking of this gives me the goosebumps wondering if he's still out there. If this man was ever successful. My parents worked long hours and finished very late. I stayed in an after school program that took place in our cafeteria, and I've done this all of my elementary school years. It was the usual. It usually consisted of doing homework, playing board games, etc. until it ended around 5 p.m. Even then, some children would be waiting around the pickup area in, in front of the cafeteria and I would join them while a guardian or security guard waited with us. I was always the last kid to be picked up, so whenever I'd leave, so would the last guardian. One day, that guardian really needed to use the bathroom, so he told me not to leave until he came back quickly. He left to use the bathroom, and I was there, alone, all by myself, waiting for my parents, either one of them, to come pick me up. I sat there on the floor against the cafeteria wall with my pink backpack and matching lunchbox when suddenly a car pulled up. A bearded man in a plaid flannel and dark sunglasses lowered the empty passenger window and said, Come on, let's go. Your dad can't pick you up today. I'm your uncle. And I just sat there gripping my backpack staring at him, frozen. I couldn't recognize him and was scared, so I didn't say a thing. I was confused and didn't know what to do because I knew I didn't know him. The man seemed to get impatient, and with a stern voice he said, Get in the car now. Your dad is hurt. We need to go see him. Hurry. I still sat there. My guardian appeared in the hallway heading in my direction, and the car sped off. My guardian wasn't able to get the license plate either, 
and told my parents about it when they came to pick me up. I never saw the man again, and the school took extra precautions. Since then, they had even more guardians watching the kids after school, which was good. But I still wonder what would have happened if I believed him and naively went with him. Or if he's done this successfully. It just creeps me out. The Counselor I attended George Washington Elementary School, located on 5th and Federal, in South Philadelphia. The school held classes from grades K through 8. The students were mostly black with few Asians, whites, and kids from Mexico, South and Central America. I started there during the 6th grade, and as with all schools I've ever attended, I quickly became known as a troublemaker and class clown. It wasn't that I enjoyed creating mischief, I did, but I also couldn't help myself. I could not go one day without causing some trouble in one form or another. I even prayed to God at night to help me become a good kid, but I guess he was busy with starving kids in other countries or something more important. Anyways, that's not the main point of this story. This story is about the man I met when I was in 7th grade. By the time I was in 7th grade, my teacher Mrs. Kelly already knew who I was, largely because she taught my crazy sister the year before. So Mrs. Kelly wasn't really looking forward to having me in her class. While in Mrs. Kelly's class, I routinely caused disturbances and the occasional fistfight. Things went too far when a girl in my class asked to see my anatomy and scream for the teacher once I obliged. Everyone believed that I exposed myself unprovoked, but I was tricked. Now I was more than just a bad kid, I was a bad seed. Shit. Mrs. Kelly had the bright idea of sending me to the school counselor, Mr. Ness. Mr. Ness was a funny looking guy from New Jersey. He had a curly mullet and one of those cleft chins that resembles a human butt. Mr. Ness sent me Hit it off right away, he seemed to respect me, so in turn I respected him. I was barely seen in class, as my teacher was fond of not having me around. It wasn't long before other problem kids started spending time with us in Mr. Ness's office. There was candy and games. We began creating activities for the children, and I even helped them start a foot hockey league after school. Mr. Ness and me were pals. He even began visiting my house. My mom was uneasy about this, and I saw her point, but Mr. Ness was, was harmless enough, right? Besides, he bought me a new video game and things like that. He was worth having around, and I figured, since I routinely carried a knife, I could handle things if they got out of control. But as I said previously, he was a harmless guy. Things with Mr. Ness progressed. My mom allowed him to take my siblings and me to Franklin Mills Mall for lunch. My cousin even attended. Eventually, my mom even agreed to let Mr. Ness take me to his nephew's soccer game in New Jersey. Mr. Ness's family seemed to think that it was weird that he brought me along. Even his nephew DJ thought it was weird. Also, I would like to point out that Mr. Ness did not have a girlfriend. Anyways. We attended the soccer match and joined his sister and friends at her house that day. I had fun with DJ and his friends. They even became fans when I showed them some cheats for the game Mortal Kombat 3. Mr. Ness and me left that evening and went to his apartment. I had been to his apartment before, but this time, we were alone. This time, my elder sister and younger brother were not there. As I mentioned in other stories, Adults were attracted to me. As a kid, I was cute and smart for my age, and my mom accepted this, but always sent a sibling or two to keep an eye on things. Well, this one Saturday night, we were alone at Mr. Ness's apartment. Billy is what he wanted to be called away from school. His plan was to eat dinner at his place. He made a roast. It was getting late, and after the concern his family seemed to communicate to me, I... I just wanted to go home. I didn't want to eat any roast and I told him. He didn't seem to care until I started making demands. 
He went out to the car and came back to tell me that it wouldn't start, and so I'd be spending the night. This was unsatisfactory, as I didn't want to stay and knew for damn sure that my mom was going to hit the fan when I called her to tell her that his car conveniently wouldn't start. My mom did have a car, but would not have been able to drive to New Jersey and get me. There was no Google Maps in those days, and we couldn't afford a computer anyways. I made the call, and as predicted, my mom was upset, as she knew she shouldn't have allowed me to go in the first place. She immediately began making phone calls, and my grandfather came to get me. My grandfather was a man who did not play around when his family was concerned. He had some strong words for Mr. Ness, and a warning which he delivered at gunpoint. I spent the night with my grandfather, and he was uneasy. He didn't like the fact that I allowed myself, along with my mom, to end up in that situation. He visited the school, and that was the end of our relationship with Mr. Ness. Mr. Ness disappeared from school, and I heard he was working at a nearby school. Fast forward a couple years, and I was living with my aunt and attending high school. I was at the Franklin Mills Mall one weekend, and I ran into one of my old classmates, who brought up Mr. Ness, and informed me that he managed to molest the nephew of another classmate. Mr. Ness, I would like to meet you again as I am a big, strong man with a child of my own, and feel a deep hatred for people who would prey upon the weak and the innocent. I was lucky enough to dodge that bullet, and the school system failed that little boy whose name I do not remember. It's a shame that there are so many cracks for people like yourself to slip through.